Hi folks, in this lesson we're going to learn about the stepper component. The stepper component is used to build a multi-step process. It's a common way of breaking down a large form into smaller and more manageable pieces and is often used for things like checkout processes. So let's create a component that we can embed a stepper into. And once that command has finished, we can then set up the root for our new component. And let's add a new item to the nav menu so that we can access it. We'll also need to import the stepper module from Angular Material into our app module before we can use the component. Let's do that next. And now we should be good to go. There are two different types of stepper that we can create, a horizontal one or a vertical one. Let's create a horizontal one. And the outer container should be a mat-horizontal-stepper custom element. Each step in our stepper is created using a mat-step element. So the structure of the stepper component itself is quite straightforward. It's quite similar to the tabs component that we looked at earlier in the course. And again, if we want to add a plain text label, we can use the label input property for that. We just need to add a tiny bit of styling for this component. And now let's take a look in the browser. So this is the default display. We can see that we get this process indicator at the top here, and these are clickable. So we can use these to navigate between the steps. And by default, we can just go to any step. And once we've visited a step, the icon changes. So by default, we get this edit icon. So there's a little pencil inside the dot. And the current step has the number of the step. So pretty straightforward. We get some nice animations when we're moving between the steps. And as with all the Angular material components, we get quite a lot of functionality out of the box with attractive visual styling with very minimal effort. As well as using the step header, we can also use buttons to navigate between the steps. So we get these special directives here for use with stepper buttons, the mat stepper next and mat stepper previous directives. And these directives just take care of correctly navigating to the previous or next step. Obviously on the first step, we don't need a previous button because there is no previous step. And on the last step, we don't need a next button because there is no next step. So let's just see how these work. So they're pretty intuitive and they work in the way that you probably would expect them to. So by default, steps are editable, which means that the user can go back and revisit previous steps at any time they want. So we can disable edit mode for each tab individually using the editable input property of the mat step component. So now we, instead of getting the pencil to say that the step can be edited, we get this tick instead. And now we can no longer go back to the previous step once we've completed it. And again, we don't have to configure the buttons to take care of this. It just works out of the box for us. So now let's say we want to provide some rich markup for the step headers instead of just plain text. We can do that easily using an ng template with the mat step label directive. And now we can see that instead of just plain text, we can use HTML elements. So there's some emphasis placed onto the rich 
word there in the label and there's a break in there as well. So our example stepper so far isn't very interesting. The stepper really makes much more sense when we use it with some kind of form where information is entered by the user on each step. There are different approaches we can take. We can use either a single form that encompasses all of the steps or we can use a separate form in each step. The approach that you take is going to vary depending on what it is you're actually trying to achieve. So I'm going to assume some level of knowledge of working with forms in Angular now, and let's add a new stepper that will capture some user input. So imagine that we're building a simple sign up flow where the user enters some personal details in the first step and then chooses some optional extras on the next step, and then the process is complete. And let's also go for the single form approach. So we'll use a card again for layout purposes. So let's add the form then. And now we can add our stepper inside the form, because remember we're using a single form that encompasses all of the steps in the stepper. So this is a mixture of Angular forms, material forms, and the stepper component. And we're going to focus on the stepper aspects mostly, but I'll briefly mention all the relevant parts. So there's another section of this course that focuses on the material forms components. So we do look at these in more detail elsewhere. So we're creating a reactive form here. So we need to specify the name of the form using the form group directive on the form itself. We can add an event handler for the ng submit event, which will be triggered when the form is submitted. The outer mat horizontal stepper element is mapped to a form array called user details. We'll create the form in the form array in the component class once we've finished adding the template. So now let's add the steps for the stepper. So the first two steps of the stepper have a form group name directive, mapping it to one of the items in the user details form array, which will be inside the user form. This is a requirement for the reactive form. The last step does not require this as there are no controls for the form in this step. Inside each step, we add some form controls and these are mapped back to controls in the reactive form using the form control name directive. Each step has the back and forward buttons, except the first step doesn't have a back button and the last step doesn't have a next button. And the last step instead has this register button. We need to set type equals button to the previous and next buttons because otherwise they will submit the form instead of navigating between the steps and we want to avoid that. Other than some extra directives, the stepper itself is not much more complex than the stepper we looked at previously. So now let's take a look at the TypeScript side of things. We'll need to add the reactive forms module to our app, as well as some additional material form control modules. And now let's go to the component class for our stepper component. So we need to bring some additional Angular classes into our component class here. So none of these are specifically for Angular material. They are for reactive forms from Angular itself. So now inside the stepper component class, we can add a property called user, which will contain the outer form. Now we'll need to inject the form builder service into the component using the constructor. And now let's add a getter so that we can easily access the form array that we'll create inside the user form in just a moment. So the getter will return a form array. So the getter is called user details. We saw this in the template on the mat horizontal stepper element and it just returns an object of the type form array. 
Inside the getter, we can get this form array from the user details form from the user details group within the user form. So now inside the ng on init method, we need to actually create the form and form array. We use the group method of the form builder to create the outer user form. We pass an object to the group method, which specifies the controls that we want to add to the form. We just add one control in this case called user details, and we set this to an empty form array using the array method of the form builder. So now we can add the actual form controls to this array. The user details form array has a push method, and we can use this to push new form groups into the array. The first one contains name and email controls with empty values, which will be input fields. And the second one contains two options, which will be for the checkboxes on step two. So this should be all we need to do to build the form. We can also add a simple submit method. And in here, let's just log out the value of the user details form. So let's go back to the browser now and check it's all working. And it looks like there's some errors in the console. Ah, it looks like I've put group group instead of form group. Let's try form group instead, which it should be. And it's looking a bit better now. So here's the first step. We've got name and email controls there. We can go to the next step and we see the options there. And lastly, we have a register button or a back button to go back to previous steps. So there's one more thing that I just want to show you quickly today. We might want to make some of the fields in the form mandatory. So let's go back to the component where we define the name and email fields. So to make the fields required fields and therefore mandatory, we can use the required property of the validators object that we brought into the class earlier. And we just change the definition of the name and email controls to use an array instead of just an empty string value. So the first item in the array is the empty string value again. And the second item is the required validator. So let's go and check it out in the browser again. So this time, if we go to step two, and then go back to step one. The validation has been triggered. So the validation error styling gets applied to these fields. And that's good, but we can actually make it even better. So we can make it so that the user cannot even progress to step two until the fields in step one are valid. So we just add the linear directive there. We don't need to configure it at all. And lastly, we need to tell the stepper about the items in the form array. We use the step control directive to associate a step with the relevant item for the form array using the get method. So let's go back to the browser now. So we're on step one. And we find now that we cannot even progress to step two using either the next button or the step headers because the fields have not been completed. So let's just complete the fields. And now we can progress to step two. Because the checkboxes aren't actually required fields, we can then move on to step three. We don't have to choose any options. So in this lesson, we've learned what the stepper component is and how it can be used to create a multi-stepped process. This is a good way to break a complex form down into manageable steps. We looked at the different elements and directives that make up a stepper component, and we saw how to create either simple text labels or richer labels containing markup. We also saw how to easily use previous and next buttons that handle navigating between the steps. Last of all, we learned how to make use of a reactive form combined with a stepper to create a stepper linked to items in a form array that can easily handle collecting user input and more complex behavior like enforcing steps are completed in the correct order, and making controls in the stepper mandatory to prevent navigation through the stepper until the fields have been completed, which is probably one of the most common requirements for a stepper component. Thanks for watching.